Let's try it one more time. Hello. Hello. Yes. Much better. Now pretend these guys aren't here because I'm going to introduce them. Can you just step one? Stay, stay here. Yeah, stay here. <laughs> okay. Who wants a taste of the classic American burger? Yay. You're not going to get a taste as you're sitting down over here. The space is here, guys. You two gentlemen at the back. Don't worry, I won't pick on you. You can sit here and you get a delicious, extraordinary burger. Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. In this demo, guys, you're getting two talented chefs for the price of one. Okay, it's three, Pinoy. Three, three, oh, sorry, three. three. I'm very <laughs> out of order. Three. I'm glad you interrupted. Andrew's here too. We've got Pinoy Canadian meets Singapore. Okay, this is the Pinoy Canadian. This is Mr. Singapore, and it's a fusion of flavors that I'm really excited about. So let's get them on. By the way, if you taste a better burger than this, you're a liar. <laughs> Rosita's Deluxe makes the best burger. Ladies and gents, hands together, please, for a pair of Metopia first timers Jeff Claudio, Andrea Sowen, and Andrew. Come forward, man. Come on, in. get comfy with the stage. Say hi. Hi, hi guys. How are you doing? How are you guys doing? Happy Sunday. Uh, first time in Metopia? First time. Enjoying yourselves? It's great. Highlights so far? This, this, this. Show? Yeah. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Now let's. I want to figure you guys out a little bit so we know who we're talking with, guys. I mean, you, some of these people in the audience—they're all experts. They know you. They know you guys already inside out. For those who don't know you, okay, I'm going to start with Jeff. Yes. Pinoy Canadian. Now yes. I get the Canadian. What's the Pinoy bit? I don't. So Pinoy is uh, another short saying for a Filipino, but there's a lot of Filipinos in Canada. And my intro to the burger was uh, half my family lives in LA. <laughs> And half my family lives in Canada, so going to LA, this is where we ate a lot of kind of burgers with family and stuff like that. So I think a lot of you guys are familiar with like In-N-Out Burger, uh, Patty, or no, is it uh, Five, guys, Five Guys, Shake Shack, this type of stuff. But I mean, LA is all about In-N-Out, like, and that was my memory. But it's interesting when we does that mean it's quick In-N-Out? What does it mean? In-N-Out. Yeah, I guess so. Pretty much. Just in and out. Yeah. Go in, eat a snack on a burger real yeah. quick and get out. Okay. Yeah. So. You give me hope for my son, Jeff. Did you know that? <laughs> What's that? You give me hope for my son. Oh, your son. Okay. My son is a kitchen porter in a London pub, and you started as a dishwasher. Is that dishwasher. Right? I think every most cooks start as dishwashers. At I'm some sure point. Most yeah, cooks I know. <laughs> but I, I mean, it's 2000 now, and cooks do it different now, you know, so. <laughs> in less than one minute, take us from dishwasher yeah. to stage on Metopia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How true, did you manage so. that? Uh, Lots of hard work. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, I want to introduce Andre, everybody. I'm going to ask Andre a few questions before we start getting into the cooking. I guess. Now, the only other Andre I know is Andre the Giant. Do you know that guy? Yeah. Yeah, you're not him. No, I Just look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're definitely the not Asian him. Asian genes of Andre the Giant, that's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, your personal journey, I like it. Singapore born. Singapore born. Yeah. Sure. What happens when you're 13? Something happens when you're 13. Uh, I my migrated research. to the States, to California, actually. And um, family's still all out there. That's where I grew up. And um, now I'm back in Singapore working, running a sandwich shop. And that's when you started working in 2012, was it with the Cajun Kings? Cajun Kings. Uh, yeah. Where was that? In America? It was in Singapore. Okay, um, so that's when you went back. Yeah. Well, what drove you back to Asia? It was an opportunity that we th I thought. Asia, especially Singapore, is really growing as a country. It was like highest GB GDP per capita. You know, there was a lot of money moving in there, and there was an opportunity because Singapore is such a food, like a food hub, pretty much. Right? Opportunities. Like so much yeah. food. Interesting different worlds, different yeah. parts of the world is going in there. Yeah. All three of us actually all moved to Singapore around the same time to yeah. go cook different restaurants and stuff. And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Me and Andrew yeah. were, I guess, working with Dave Pint at Burnt Ends, so. You know, we were all there. And, uh, Andre was a customer coming in and eating at Burnt Ends, and he had Cajun Kings. So Rosita's kind of happened from a staff meal into a pop-up. And now, six years down the road, it's a reason for us to get together every quarterly or half a year. And it's pretty amazing, the power of the, the so burger. You guys you know? like so you guys do yeah, we have our own stuff. You like come back every quarter. Yeah, some or if something like this comes up, and Metopia's big company, money to what fly did you people notice? like there us. Because you were in, when you were in, uh, in America, you noticed there was a gap, something missing in Singapore. American, what was that? American cuisine. Well, in particular, the sandwich. Um, well, now it's a sandwich. At first, it was Cajun food. There's nothing like that over there. And um, I guess once I was living out in Singapore, 
it's a rice and noodle culture where you don't really get good burgers, you don't really get good sandwiches. So I went to open a sandwich shop, but um, this burger thing that we do now, it's kind of just for fun, but it's also something that we really miss that we don't get in Asia. Is this the Park Bench Deli? Park Bench Deli, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, I quote guys, Singapore's favorite sandwich shop or your only sandwich shop, which is it? <laughs> only sandwich shop. <laughs> Bold sandwiches made with swagger. Yeah. Kind of. Um, yeah, we just make sandwiches, nothing crazy. You know, it's just, we don't try to do too much stuff with it. Try to bring the classics back, make it as good as something that you eat back home, like a salt beef bagel, if you have it over here. If you're in Asia, you don't really get that too much. We try to make it something like that. So, you know, someone like an expat that's eating out there, um, it just brings them back home, reminds them of home. So if people are, if, if you to change, if, 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 if it wasn't there before in Singapore, how did you change minds to come and have a go and have a try and make it, make it a success? I don't know. It started, well, we started as a pop-up just to test whether Asians would eat it. And um, it was doing okay. And, and we, you know, what I've done is really got to work with all my friends. I brought them in just to do pop-ups and collaborations together. They got to do a sandwich at my shop. So it's to make a sandwich, not just like that Subway yeah. you know, part of sandwiches, because a lot of people think sandwiches and it goes that way. And sandwiches are quality, you know, good bread, good meat, just like a burger too, with good bread and good meat, that's yeah. all you kind of need. And um, yeah, that's kind of what we do over there. But what you say is, you say do it big, you say do it right. So give me an example, are all the sandwiches like really big sandwiches? Yeah, well, not, not that big, but um, you know, because it'll cost too much. It'll be like 30 bucks for a sandwich if I did that in Asia. Um, but uh, we try we just make it better than the, the ratios of it, because you know, people give you like two thick breads and like one slice of Parma ham or something, and that's never fun. So we try to make it more meat, more proteins, or things like that. Nothing, nothing fancy, but just good, good flavors. Who's getting hungry? Okay, can we guys start talking about what we're gonna cook? Um, uh, yeah, we're cooking a classic cheeseburger. Yeah, um, so I guess with the the burger, it's just like, I guess, American barbecue. It's very regional, like there's all these different kinds. I mean, when we started Rosita's, we were starting with a very in and out style burger with kind of like the, I'd say like Russian dressing, lettuce, tomato, and this and that. And slowly through the years, we've just eliminated all of that. And now it's just very simple. It's bread, meat, onion, pickle, no sauce, no nothing, just the right seasoning and the right choice of meat. And I mean, we did a pop-up here last summer and it was just amazing to use the meat here in, in okay, London. I think it's the best, here. like maybe oh, where's the, the best. Where's the meat source? Is it Turner George? Uh, Nathan's uh, Butcher. Yeah, Nathan. Nathan's Butcher. Yeah, Nathan's yeah. Butcher. Okay. So. And just given it, you know, what kind of mints, I mean, how did you guys, you know, bring me right back to how you actually have made these burgers and how you've actually made them because I haven't got a clue. So I, I mean, we learn. usually make them, but Nathan is just an he amazing. Put he put it together for us, and it's like a, we like a really coarse ground, but when we we worked on like using, was it 80, 80 70 chuck. percent? 80 chuck? Yeah. 80 eight. percent chuck, 5 percent aged beef fat. Yeah. Okay, talk to me about chuck. I don't know what you're talking about. What's that's 80 percent chuck? So that's, a, I guess, from the shoulder front part of the animal. Yeah. So it has a lot of the connective tissue, fat, flavor, uh, I guess that would give the most structure to the burger. Okay. Um, the others, I just would say it's like the additional, like the additional, like, you know, you get meat from the short rib. It would have, you know, a lot of blood. Like it would give it a little different flavor Does to the burger. Does it hold together more? Than yeah, I mean, that's like really technical, but I mean, the true diner burger in America, like they would just use whatever meat. Like <laughs> it's nothing special. Like, you know, this is going deeper when you're starting talking about like burger blends. But um, I mean, I think if you use 100% chuck, you're going to be just fine. But uh, you want me to talk about what yes, Andrew's please. doing? Yes, so please. Because I, well, I, well, I know you're a massive fan of onions. So this... <laughs> well, uh, look at that. that uh, of course, we're huge fans. So <laughs> this technique that Andrew's doing, this was uh, started in Oklahoma. So like there's the 1950s. A yeah, early I think 1950s. around the 50s. But it was a way to kind of bulk up. Because, you know, like... Uh, a burger is a very working man's dish in, in America. You know, the bigger, bigger the better, right? Like, yeah. you know <laughs> so they use onions to kind of bulk the portion size. So it would be like really like half and half, like. But that's they a would serious amount of onion going on that burger. It shrinks. It's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> really thinly sliced yeah, onions too, so it helps. It yeah. makes it the cooking process a lot faster. Yeah. So what Andrew's doing right now is just pressing the patty, 
um, we put the patty on salt pepper and then slice onions on top once he presses it give it a minute or two just to caramelize the yeah. bottom so the on yeah the onions really adhering to the patty right now becoming one but at the same time steaming all the juices are going into the fat into the meat and what we do is just leave it and we didn't add any oil to the griddle or anything like that it really sticks and you get all that beautiful sweetness that flavor from the meat and when he flips it you'll see that he gets a beautiful crust it's amazing that this is Actually, at the right temperature. Right? Really, really hot. Yeah. Yeah. So, is it? Um, I hope it's. Is it? Does okay, that meat yeah. be marinated? Any marinade oh, on that meat first? Or? No marinade, no just marinade. salt, pepper. That's yeah. the main. That's no, nothing, the main yeah. stuff so that we put in there. And what's the theory behind that? Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. So now you keep it all together. So right, it's so nice it when it's uh, all kind of steaming together. And usually, like at, you know, these places that do this kind of burger, they'll have like 20 going, and it's all yeah, really yeah, yeah, all yeah, steaming yeah. together. So what you do is you add. Two That's slices of, kind of cheese, processed American processed cheese, cheese yeah. craft. <laughs> Those I mean, uh, ones yeah. with the plastic wrap. More the plasticky, the better. Is that, are they uh, easy singles or something? Easy singles? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no gris, no gorgonzola, no, none of that <laughs> stuff. I mean, for some people, it's okay. It's all, it's all personal, you know, like what it you like. That's the first time I made a Bitopia where someone said processed but, uh, food's okay. Now we add... I'm beginning to sweat. Yeah. So these buns are potato buns. I know... People yeah, talk about, about I mean, is it brioche every time? Or we do I'm not, like brioche, I find if you have a juicy burger, it kind of disintegrates. I find the potato bun really kind of stays together and just gets really squishy. So Andrew just added a little bit of water. And water. now not the oil, vapors water. are all steaming. And what's nice, when you give it a press, the ratio of the patty and the bun become more one. It's like, I, I don't know. It's Steams like the bread a little bit and melts the cheese yeah. to get it gooey. So we just... That's you know. the toughest part when you're cooking a burger. Your fire is always on the bottom, and your cheese never melts in the middle. Yeah. So what this technique kind of makes the whole thing melt and gets all gooey and not too watery of a cheese, obviously. You paying um, attention? Yeah, that's the main part of this really good. to steam the bread, too, so you get a nice, soft, squishy one. You don't want to have a, a dried huh? bread where you're eating a nice, juicy burger, You just put it straight too. onto the counter here. So the whole thing yeah. blends together really well. And as we're cooking it right now, too, the onions are getting fried on the bottom, caramelizing a little bit, and also cooking the bottom of the beef. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty quick and simple burger. We don't do anything fancy for this one. Like, there's no mustard, no ketchup. Just kind of let the meat and bread do the talking. And, um, but there are gherkins. So if yeah. you look at that, what Andrew did with the bread, too, we put the, so pretty much the bottom bun and the top bun. But if we take the bottom bun and flip it and then put the top bun over it. So what he does now is you could assemble that really quickly by scooping the bottom. Then you got the top bread up. But the bottom bun's already stuck to the cheese with the meat. And, um takes that top bun, you scoop a little bit of meat juice on the, on the plancha, the griddle, so you get some of that nice caramelized onions flavor and all that meat juice, and then oh, kind of just put it together. Can I bring you back to the onion? Just because I, I know you're a big fan of that as an ingredient, and the myriad of flavors that are in these. Best friends, <coughs> they're best, best friends. Well, beef, beef and onion. How do you stop the tears flowing down every time you're working? Just quit being soft, just take it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's just called it's me soft. <laughs> it's okay to cry a bit, you know. It's, it's okay just like to onions. cry. Yeah. So you would recommend no wearing no goggles? Swimming, I wear swimming goggles when I'm doing it now. Don't wear goggles, just <laughs> take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put some Korean drama on the side and pretend it's you're okay crying. It's okay to cry, man. For onions, it's okay. Accept it, you know? Like, yeah. I think everybody wants to have a go in this burger, am I right? Everybody wants to have a go in this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so what we do so is we. Get more on. So pickles. Buy them. Look for the crinkle cut. Heinz is a good Don't got to make it. Don't Keep make it. Simple. You know, like, uh, as you can see, our prep was pretty <laughs> pretty busy here. Uh, buying pickles. The meat was portion. Well, I'm buy the crinkle cut away the one secrets. so it I'm looks like, you know, you made, did something yeah. with it. Yeah. Um, so what we like is also dill pickles. Just simple dill pickles that give a nice crunch to it. Nice vinegary yeah. flavor to it, too. Yeah, and load it up and spread it out so each bite, each bite gets it. Yeah. It's nice. I like a lot of pickles. Uh, some yeah, people don't. Yeah. Up to you how much pickles you want to put. Same thing with the onions. Do you all oh. want pickle? Yeah. 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 All right. Let's add a little Makes bit Makes it more. easy. Yeah. And, and that's it. Event's that's over. We got to actually use more pickles now. Yeah, that's the burger that we kind of came to. I think to they make it look simple, am I right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not sure these should go out whole because we're nowhere going to feed these guys. So we need to chop these into sure segments. Nice. Of yeah, like yeah. Uh, I would even suggest uh, four. I was going to say eight. Yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. So we chop up a few. Yeah. Start yeah. getting them out. Yeah. Funny, I might handle them out. Yeah. 
So if you take a look at this burger, that's as simple of a burger that you can cook back home too. You could do it in a cast iron pan or... Do. Yeah, it's really, really straightforward to do. Good for breakfast. Yeah. Make so it for something breakfast. like that. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's about it. Nothing crazy. I think that deserves a clap, am I right? <laughs> what do you think? Yay. Yeah. Yeah, Andrew. Andrew. Andrew, yeah. Andrew's a good friend of ours that um, lives in Nebraska now. He used to work in Singapore, too, and uh, ran a barbecue restaurant called Meat Smith. Meat Smith, yeah. He was the head chef there for how long, Andrew? Four years? Four, five, four, five years? Yeah. 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 Okay, as I serve this food out, can you talk to us a bit about the, this is a bit heavy, but I think it's an important subject, the evolution of the American burger. The evolution, pff, I don't know if I'm the right person to ask. Well, you know, regions, <laughs> regions, and how they uh, influence the burger. Well, and as far as I know, uh, yeah, the name hamburger came from Hamburg. Yeah. Uh, I know because I, I mean, I live in Berlin and there it's, I think it's Frikadella or it's, it was just like kind of a ground meat patty that you eat with like sauce, veggies. But when it came over to America, I think in the early 1900s or late 1800s, it Amazing. just like, uh, you know, things were changing and it, you know, things were mobile. People were busy. They were on the go. So it went in between two pieces of bread. But from that and how it traveled to the West Coast, you know, like the ingredients, obviously having the tomatoes and lettuce in California, like, you know, things like people eat different when it's hot and cold and different cultures. Like, I know out East, there's probably lots of Germans. There's a lot of Eastern Europeans like onions, you know what I mean? So that's why it's super regional. There's different burgers okay. from everywhere in America, and I think a lot of it has to do with the people, so. Isn't it true that the bread originally was meant just to hold the burger, because the burger was too well, hot? There, there, there is actually a really famous place that claims to have originated and first made the burger in America. It's called, it's in Connecticut, it's called Lewis Lunch. And this place actually serves the burger on just simple white slice. A slice of tomato, and they swear by no ketchup, no nothing, but uh, you no should bun. check it out. It's a really interesting way they cook the burger. It's okay. in a vertical grill that they Put in racks and slide it in. It's, re it's really interesting. Look at the hungry so faces at the back. Yeah. You gotta the feel sorry for the hungry okay. faces at the yeah. back. Thank you. Yeah. So, so not yeah, long, guys. Not I long. I mean, yeah. everyone has different flavors that they like with burgers. You can add tomatoes and lettuce. This is yeah. the style that we're doing. You know, people ask for sauce. You can put ketchup and mustard if you like to. Yeah. Um, but what we have with this meat, it just tastes great. Let the meat kind of do the talking instead of you know when you put ketchup and mustard, it kind of overpowers th that meat flavor. And for a burger like that, it's rather simple that we want that. But yeah, but Just I mean, a it's cheeseburger, meat, bread, cheese. It's entirely up to you. I mean, no, don't let anybody tell you what. Yeah, if you want to put blue cheese or want, truffle yeah. mayo or is, whatever, you know, go fancy. This with is it, just but us. This is what just the basic what one we like. So. But if you were asked what is the archetypal <coughs> American burger, what would the answer be? This is one of them. Okay. This is definitely this one of them. There's more than classics one. For sure. There's definitely more than one. But yeah. this is, like, I think Almost when it. Almost every state has their own little. Yeah, I mean, when it really started in, I think. State Fair in New York, I think this is how they cook burgers and everything like that. I mean, this is a long time of researching a lot of pop-ups we did where we were just doing different types of burgers, and we landed on this. Like, I mean, the bun's not even toasted. The There's no, like, there's there's nothing really to it other than meat and bread. And this They're and that, talking so. it down, but I bet it's yeah. delicious. Yeah. Now yeah. I'm going to ask some people questions, especially those who just tasted the burger. Andrew, we on here? Is this on? Is it What's your uh, you dip, dip, testing? Yeah, one, two, okay. one, two. What's your name? Werner. Where are you from? Uh, Scotland. Good. Have the Scottish got a burger? Uh, it's got haggis on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sammy, what sort of flavors and things are you getting from that burger? Uh, for me, the onions stood out. The onions were really, really good on it. I don't like onions, but that was good. <laughs> so. That's a good start. Yourself, what's your name? You from the same area? Yeah, Nathan from Scotland as well. Tell us, Nathan, what did you get out of that burger? Yeah. Like Werner said, the onions really stood out. It was nice. I like a burger without too much stuff on, so you just get the taste of the meat and the, the cheese, so it was good. So the less complicated the burger, the better. Would you agree, Jeff? The less complicated. The less complicated the burger. Yeah. Makes it yeah. easier when you're cooking for a big party, too. You know, you don't have to chop 200 tomatoes and lettuces and stuff like that. Just, just chop onions and cry a little bit, and that's about it. Who else tasted a burger here? What's your name? Uh, Michael. Where are you from, Michael? I'm from the Isle of Man. I love your beard. Thank you. You're very handsome. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Carry on. What did you think of that burger? Yeah, it was good. I, I like the way they steamed the bun. It sort of heated the, 
the bread all the way through, gave it a very fresh taste and was springy and so on. Um, and especially with the, the water and steaming that, I thought that was great. Um, and uh, the one of the things that I think is really hard in the way you do that there is to cook the onion on such a hot plate but without burning and so to yeah. ensure that you only caramelise it without yeah. burning it. And I think you've done that really well. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because I think a lot of places uh, caramelise the onions first and then add it on. But you get a really different type of onion flavor, right? It's like more of a stewed one. It's really soft. This one has still a little bit of a bite. Like, and uh, I think it's nice, right? Like when you have it. So. It's so tough to do it on such a hot plate. Yeah. Yeah. So. It yeah. I, I mean, yeah. You're impressed. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yourself? <laughs> it was delicious. The, the meat was, which nobody's mentioned the meat yet, but the meat is, um, uh, I always cook burger with chuck. I always chop it by hand, and it's, it's always delicious. It's my, one of my favorite cuts of the animal. But the way you cook with the onions, finely mandolin, is a revelation. That's yeah. how you make it really delicious. And actually, uh, a lot of people talk about washing the onions, but... I mean, squeeze the juice do, out and do, do not like you want all that juice, all that sugars and stuff. You really wash too much of the flavor out. When What's the theory behind washing the onion? Well, I think if you eat it raw and you have it through salad and stuff like that, like, but if you're cooking it, you don't. It's I think it's an absolute error. Like, <laughs> don't wash your onions. <laughs> yeah, don't like unless you're eating it through salad or something. Like, you, you don't don't like. I highly advise. There's a guy over here who wants to make burgers, and he promised me a yeah. question. Have you got a question for the guys? <laughs> What's your name? Luke. Did you have a taste of the burger? Yeah. Oh, what did you think? Yeah, it was lovely. It was real nice. Just um, yeah. what cuts of meat do you prefer in a the burger then, really? So right. we talked about it, but what cuts of meat is best for the burger? Best for the burger? Well, like I said, a uh, high percentage of chuck meat because the one thing is you're always going to get fat. You're always going to get that nice connective tissue, which is all the flavor. Um, and also, too, like, you know, if you think about the animal, it's using a lot of the, you know, the, the front, the shoulders, the... So there's a lot of blood, you know, and I'd say you can go 100% chuck and you'll probably be pretty safe. I think it's like when you really want to customize, that's when you start adding the short rib, the dry-aged fat, the brisket, this type of stuff. But um, for the most part, like, if you want to play it safe, 100% chuck is... Totally okay. 100% yeah, chuck. So. What's your view on brisket, actually? Because it's quite divisive, isn't it? It's quite a divisive... Brisket? Yeah, I mean... Some people love it, some people hate it. Yeah, like, I mean, there's some burger places that are famous for just using, like, deckle, like, from, you know, and this type of stuff. But, I mean, brisket gives a real, you know, it has a lot of fat. It's a nice cut to use for burgers, but you can't use 100% no, because it just doesn't glue together. Like, when you cook it, it just kind of... Crumbles, right, we're cooking like, more burgers, so need, guys. Yeah, for those right yeah, at the back. So, yeah, yeah. But Chuck's yeah, okay, the best. Okay, it really okay. stays together. It's really, yeah. Who's but I would say, if we're talking about grind, because, I mean, we looked at it a lot. Also, uh, the style that we do, too. Yeah. How we press it down right now. Yeah. You don't want to mix it. You mix it a little bit, but don't over mix it, or else you get a really gummy. The texture patty. gets different. So what we have yeah. is a large, coarse, like, ground. Um, it gives it that nice texture you're eating right now. You know, when a lot of people tend to mix their meats too much. Yeah, it's quite... And it becomes very pasty. I don't know, where did that come from? Some burgers, they, they add egg and, like, breadcrumbs and all this stuff. I don't know, like, but I know that is a style of a burger, too. And, like, but it's nice when you eat it and it just kind of just crumbles, like, and... Uh, and when you yeah. press it like that, too, it cooks a lot faster when you press it flat. Yeah. You know, you don't have that... You know, what do you, if you want to meet him where or um, well done? Yeah, it's a lot faster process than a thick burger. I don't know. We're fans of thinner patties than than the thick ones. Yeah, just feels better, I think, when you're eating. Not too. It doesn't feel like you're eating too much meat. Also, one of the other know. rules too that w w we like is one hand. You should be able to eat a burger with one hand. Like nothing should slide out. Nothing should be spilling out. Like it's just one hand. I'm not much bigger then. Huh? <laughs> Not much bigger either. <coughs> yeah. One hand you got, you know, sometimes you got to hold it with. I mean, if it's, yeah, I'm depends. Some people, small hand. Thing. I'm out of pickles. Now, you were enjoying that yeah. burger. Can I ask you a question? Or well, you got a question. Uh, what's your name? I have four pickles left. Claire, <laughs> you got any uh, questions for the gentleman or opinion on the burger? I know it's a really good burger. Um, obviously, it'd be better if it was in London, not, not Singapore. But yeah, it was really good. <laughs> But you guys, how about, do you guys come to London often, or do you, you've been to London before, haven't you, Jeff? I used to live here, yeah, I used to live here, yeah. Because there was a big influence on your life in London. Numa Mendes, was that a guy that you 
Nuno, yes, I work with Nuno. Yeah, for a couple years, a couple years, yeah, yeah, and he's quite a uh, fixture uh, in East London. So yeah, who's he and what's his story? Was he? Uh you know, I think just same like, I guess any chef who's ambitious, traveling, uh, fell in love with London. Like a now, lot stop of us, you so right there. This guy yeah. just yeah. mentioned traveling, <laughs> and I think it's really important that you guys understand how much this guy has traveled. And actually, I think one of the biggest narratives. Yeah. <laughs> No, working with working with these working with Chess and Mitopia now over the last three years, one of the massive narratives is the amount of travel that these guys do. It's extraordinary, and it's I think it's a really changing. important way to learn, right? Yeah, it's changing, and um, yeah, I think it's the the influence you get. It's it's the best school, I think. It's the best. But we're school. talking, right? I'm going to read a list yeah. here. Okay, this is how far this guy has traveled. You ready? Toronto, Vancouver, London, New York, Singapore, Denmark, Hong Kong, Berlin, Paris. That's not it. That's, that's way, not that's it. That's way more than that. <laughs> we live vicariously through Jeff, you know, like, <laughs> that's why he had to delete his Instagram account, so could stop giving him shit of, like, where are you at right now, you know, like, we all live, man, this guy Friends are mean, friends are mean, uh, friends. <laughs> no one, you don't, you don't need them. I love these guys, but, uh, you don't, you don't <laughs> Yeah, but he's never been to Dublin. <laughs> yeah, so. He needs to rectify yeah. that. You need to rectify <laughs> that. Yeah. After the show, let's fly to Dublin tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you a good time. <laughs> Who's got a question before we give out more burgers? Any questions here at the back or opinions on the burger? Did a burger stop here? Did you have a burger? What do you think, buddy? What's your name? Phil. Phil, where are you from? Bradford. You're very welcome. Did you travel down or are you London based? No, I'm London based. Yeah. Oh, right, nice one. What did you get the burger? A very good burger. He's very deep voice, isn't he? He's quite hard to hear. Yeah, here it's a very good burger. <laughs> <laughs> what about yourself? Yeah, I thought it was lovely. Yeah, and it was good that you didn't need actually any sauce. Which I'm a sauce girl. A sauce girl. So you, d you never. Think sauce is cool or it is cool or it doesn't matter? Or sauce is great. We yeah. love, we like what, mustard ketchup's a great one. Yeah, I like mustard. Yeah, just regular American yellow mustard. And then or, yeah, in and out and, and Shake Shack and all these restaurants now, uh, burger restaurants do their special sauce. That's a great one too. It's like what, ketchup, mayo, some pickles in it, a little vinegar and, you know, chop it up and mix it all together into this sauce. Almost like a their own rendition of a Thousand Island sauce. And that's what they put in burgers, and, and it tastes great. I, I love In-N-Out's animal style, which is, and then they put that, that little special sauce in it too. It tastes great. Like. Who else had a burger? Oh yeah, go ahead. What's your name, what's your name? Angus. Where are you from? Uh, well, Coventry, really. Coventry, my wife's from Coventry. Good. Um, it's a kip, isn't it? <laughs> 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 go for it, what's your question? Um, what sort of onions do you use? I mean, the sweet onions? Because they're nice, they were well, being cooked so quickly, they were nice and sweet. What kind of onions are you using? Yellow, yellow onions. Yeah, just reg regular white onions, yeah. White. So they don't have to be sweet onions, they don't have no, to be No, no. But I think in America they have this type, it's called Vidal Vidalia. Vidalia, Vidalia, yeah. Vidalia onion, yeah. Oh man, yeah, But enough. just regular white Not enough pickles. onion, yeah, white onions. Just I think the lesson of the day is keep it simple. Who else had a burger down here? Yeah. You did? What's your name? Uh, Thomas, yeah. Thomas. Um, so I think what the interesting fact is, nowadays when you go and have a burger, usually you have like those big patties, like those enormous patties. This is kind of a complete different style and, and, and kind of brings back the idea of having a bun, of having more to taste than in a certain way, just the meat. Really liked it. No, it's a, it's a great concept. Cool. And in and out style in a certain way. Cool. Yes, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in and out's not a negative. I'm just thinking it's a negative. It's not. It's a positive. Yeah. Okay. So the patty is popular. What did you think yourself? Well, for me, salt was missing, but otherwise it was pretty good. Ah, salt was missing. We got a criticism in the crowd. Oh, it's We good. got a critic. That's good. Chef, <laughs> where you go? Yeah, where's the chef? <laughs> yeah. Don't blame the two celebrity chefs. Just blame the poor chef who <laughs> made the burgers. So some people want salt, dude. Sorry. No opinion on that? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got different flavors of how salty it gets. So, yeah. You know, if you like more salt, please put more salt in it. Yeah. Feel free to put as much salt on it as you wish. Who else? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Do we promise everybody at the back getting a burger here, guys? Have they all gone again? Oh, good man. So, tell what's your name? Uh, Steve. Where are you from, Steve? I'm from Staines. Okay. <laughs> what? Excuse me? It's only a microphone. What are you worried okay. about? <laughs> Pass. <laughs> what's your opinion on the burger? Uh, really nice. Really nice. Like an orgy in my mouth. Like an orgy in his mouth. Oh, wow, nice. You clapped yourself there. Yeah. No, no, I quite liked it. 
I quite liked it. Oh my God, look at these guys. Are you eating the burger? We've got to have opinions if you're eating the burger. Right, mid-eating burger. This is a good one. What sort of flavors are happening there for you? Um, yeah, it's, a, it's really beefy, juicy, well-seasoned. I think that's, yeah, that's spot on. That's like the perfect burger. Quick question. After your own burger, what's your next best go-to burger? Oh, uh, I really like the chili burger. The chili burger is really good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there was, there is this place that I grew up eating at in LA. It's called Tommy's Burger, and uh, they're famous for their chili, chili con carne burger. It's just cheese, chili con carne, and uh, on the side they give you these little uh, cascabella pickles, uh, chili pickles, and then you just kind of chase it with that. It's really, really nice. Yeah. Is a cheeseburger your favorite burger? But you always have cheese in a burger? Is that your favorite? Cheese? Andre, you're nodding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cheese is good. Cheese, yeah. You had to taste the burger. Processed What's your name? Cheese. Processed cheese is good, yeah. Lucy, yeah. where are you from? Uh, Bucks. Bucks? Yeah. Well, Tally's nice thing with meat books and beer books. You didn't know this. Tell us, what do you think of the burger? What are your opinions? Yeah, I thought it was amazing. I don't like sauce, so uh, this is like the perfect burger for me. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing. Perfect. Delicious. <sighs> Not enough salt. <laughs> uh, anybody got a question? I got a couple of questions for these guys before we wrap up. Anybody got any more questions for them? This is a good opportunity. Trust me, pick these guys' brains. How are you doing? What's your name? Uh, Harry. Do you need Hang on, Harry. Hang on. Where are you from? Uh, from London. It's even a travel for you. You're very welcome. Huh? First time in Utopia? Uh, no, my fourth, fifth time. Something like that. Fourth, fifth time in Utopia. Can we give this guy a hand of applause, please? Can we round of applause? <laughs> yeah, go for it. What's your question? Yeah. Uh, do you need to like rest the burgers at all? Do you do you like leave them to sit for a bit and kind of like for the juices to? Not necessary with no. this burger, because um, it's pl pressed pretty flat. You don't really have to, and with the juice too, it, sit, it rests on the bun where it kind of the the bun soaks it up. So if you put it on the side and and it starts the the juice starts going away, then you end up having a really dry patty. So it's best just to do it right away and like eat it, eat straight, it away. straight away too. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. Yep. What's your name, sweetheart? Brenda. Where Hi are you Brenda. from? Uh, originally South Africa, via London, now in Winchester. Oh, so wow. you're, f no, you're a fan of brine, all that kind of stuff? For all the Absolutely. So. What's your question? Uh, so popular, well, you guys might uh, tell me otherwise. You can't just live on burgers alone. Is there anything else you'd, you like to cook and enjoy cooking? Um, well, this is, the only, this is the burger that we're serving at Metopia. Uh, but when we do an actual pop-up for Zetas, we have... A chili burger. We have um, your classic like McDonald's cheeseburger, which is like the pickles, mustard, ketchup, lettuce, tomatoes, and then the other one where you put special sauce on it. And you know, we we mess around with burgers a lot. Um, this one of our new favorite ones was the Oklahoma fried onion burger. Um, so you put a lot of sha thin shaped onions into it and kind of keep it simple like that. But it's a, um, crowd, it's a crowd pleaser. Yeah, it's a crowd, crowd pleaser. So. Crowd pleaser, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Because because and, and we like too, it. We like a, a we lot like of people. We had we so. served about fifteen hundred burgers over the last two days, and uh. There's no way we could have done lettuce and tomato and. Yeah. Like uh, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just like. Let's skip that. It's um, like, come but on, come on, you know man. when when people nah. eat the burger, you know a lot of people nah. expect, hey, do you have ketchup? Do you have sauce? Oh man. Um, you know, so everyone kind of asks that when you're doing it, but if you just tried the burger, you technically don't really need it. You know, you, you realize that when you're eating it, if you put ketchup on it, you're just tasting ketchup over everything else. And, and we got really good butcher by Nathan's yeah, Butcher. Yeah, I think, I think the UK is blessed with amazing... It's great. Yeah. But, but, I mean, butcher, butchery culture, amazing uh, growers. You know, I mean, the meat, the meat is, I mean, amazing. And like that's the reason why Rosita's never became a physical shop in Singapore, too, because... It's hard to get good... It's meat yeah, like you got to so. import meats from the UK or America, yeah. and and it ends up you selling a thirty dollar burger, which doesn't make sense. It's too luxurious. Um, it should be your everyday kind of meal, and and that's why we kept it as a pop up. So you that's what a burger is. Try to make is. the best it's one uh, every time we get. To it's do like, it. you know, pizza, pizza, hamburgers. It's like one of the most famous food item in the world, and it shouldn't be expensive, and it should be accessible and well cooked, and yeah, so. Any further questions, guys? I've got a few left, but have any got any further questions? Yes, running over here. Hello, 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 hello. How you doing? What's your name? Michelle. Michelle, what's your question? I'm just wondering, so this would taste really good, and I think I always ruin my burgers by mixing the meat with other things. Do you ever bind the mince patty with anything else? Does that make sense? Like, I always put egg in so it binds. Yeah, my mom, my mom did that and put... 
breadcrumbs and stuff. I always, sorry, I think it's, yeah, it's uh, strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, we like it like that, too, the style that we've yeah. done with 80% chuck. You know, you put a little fat in it. Um, yeah. Not too much fat, because then you, when you cook your burger on high heat, it just gets too greasy. Um, but a nice little texture. And we had HB fat. We got blessed with some HB fat, which is really nice. Um, but even if you get your supermarkets, kind of just that mince burger kind of thing, just just cook it like that. And, and it should come out pretty pretty similar. Yeah, don't complicate yeah, it. Is don't overcomplicate things. Don't, don't think about it too much. Don't, don't just spend like $200 on like a filet mignon or something to blend it in, you know, just keep it simple. If, like you, that. if you use filet mignon, put it in, blend it, I mean, you should just like... Jeff would judge. End it. Did <laughs> 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 it again? Just avoid light meat. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, just buy it, you know, ground already. Even it's even 100% uh, chuck works yeah. too. <laughs> you don't have to go fancy with like, unless yeah. you have a butcher that helps you out and, you know, you get choices that you want to do. Um, we recommend really the higher ratio, um, the balance of chuck and adding a little bit more like short rib or aged fat or even just fat itself. Um, but you can go 100% fat uh, chuck and, and it should t still taste good. Yeah. Chuck. Keep it simple. Chuck. Cry Chuck. when your onions are chopped, being yeah. chopped. I've learned that lesson today. Now, listen, I go, there's about four minutes left before these guys go, right? And then they're gone. It's your last chance to get these guys a question. I've got a question for the two of you, and it's about sustainability. Yes. Something that's pretty much, you know, very much at the heart here at Metopia. And I want to ask you guys, and it's a question for the two of you. Take, a, take this question both. How do you behave in a sustainable fashion when you're doing what you do? Andre. <laughs> Andre. Ah. Uh, <laughs> well, if, I mean, no, I mean food wastage. If, I mean, if you get where to work with you know farmers that actually give you have good cows, and you know they, they, that's pretty much it. You don't you don't go get your crazy farm ones. Yeah. That's like you know it, you it's taste the difference I, in your I meat mean, too when you have a, yeah. you know like a big chicken factory compared to like your free range chickens that you get out here. And um, there's a really big difference in all or s all sorts of yeah. um. I bodies. think yeah. I mean it's. It's a tough one. I mean, you have to, this day and age, you got to pick and choose your battles. Like, I definitely try to do my part and, and be aware and have awareness because it's a crazy time in this world, right? Does like London have all those, like, impossible foods kind of meat out here? Well, aren't you, uh, Andrew, so aren't you working with plant-based burgers? Is that something you're developing? Yeah, the plant-based plant burgers, so Talk yeah. a little bit like that. What, what, Andrew, like, uh, uh, like... Dre's using it right now at his shop. Yeah, uh, we use it for a patty melt, which is like a different impossible version impossible of a burger, Impossible Foods. Foods, yeah. So. It's a company from California from where I'm at, and uh, I got to work with them and partner with them. Uh, I think their mission is really to try to make it eco-friendly in a way where you're producing from plants. It's great. It's not, it's not obviously, it's not beef. Um, you know, if you have, you're looking for that beef flavor, you know, go get beef. Unless so you're not pretending it tastes like beef. It's nothing like no, that. No, but it's I mean, yeah. it bleeds like beef, and, and it doesn't. You know, it feeds a lot of people. And in Asia, a lot of people are Buddhists and and vegans and all that kind of stuff. And that's an alternative that you can get and do the exact same thing that we just did and still taste great. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do we think, guys? Are we happy? Yeah. All the burgers are gone, so we're going to wrap this one up. One last chance to ask these guys a question. You sure? Going. Going, yeah, ladies I hope, and gentlemen. I hope everyone oh, gets to try oh, to cook the man a in the back. Like the man yeah. We've got, we got a man at the back. Yeah. yeah. Where's the man at the back? Please. Yeah. Dude. Man, we did a lot. <laughs> I gotta come around here. Yeah, go for it. No more, Jack. What's your name? Jack. Jack, what's your question? Um, do you ever cook your burgers medium, or do you always say like not pink, or? Well, I mean, it's hard, hard because I mean the weight of our patty is only 120 grams, and when you smash it down. And by the time it cooks, it's pretty well. Like, I think it only works if you're going to, if we do, like, sometimes we did one, it's like 140 gram, 150 gram. Like, you can, but it's just not the style that we usually do. The I process of what we yeah. do, because you're putting it to melt the cheese and, and everything like but that. But also, too, that, like, the thicker patty and the one you're talking about, that's more of a sit-down restaurant kind of burger. Like, this is more, like, say, diner fast food kind of burger. So I think to temperature, we don't usually do it's just uh but i think that's just a cultural thing in america no one other than if you're in new york they take temperature because in the east coast you eat burgers in restaurants in the west coast it's fast food so it's uh it's just yeah but we do yeah thin patties so it's kind of hard yeah happy <laughs> 
Right, guys, we're going to wrap with these guys. So please put your hands together for Thanks, Jeff Claudio, guys, thank you very much. Andrea Sohn, thank you. Thank you. and Andrew. Thank you. Uh, where's Andrew? Andrew. <laughs> Andrew! <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good thank one. You. Thank well you. done, guys. Listen, back here at 3 o'clock with the legend that is <laughs> hey, Tim Byers. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> oh, there's Andrew. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Cheers, buddy. It's good.